Welcome back guys to another video. So we're gonna go over the next step in the swing, which is called the half swing, which is just a little bit bigger than the small swing that we learned in the previous video. Uh, so let's get started. And if you like this video, please give it a like and just remember to subscribe if you wanna see more. So compared to the small swing, which we know is waist high to waist high, now the half swing is about when the left arm gets parallel with the ground in the backswing to when the right arm gets parallel with the ground in the follow through. So again, just like the last video, I'll show you a, a few demonstrations from the front view and a couple swings uh, from the side view just so you know what it looks like. And then what I'll be doing is I'll, I'll be kind of demonstrating it and explaining how to, do, how to perform these movements and what the, what the common mistakes are as well. From uh, the front view, there's a couple things that are really key for a lot of beginners to understand. So the first thing would be to understand how to properly hinge the wrists or set the club um, so that your left arm and the club is about at 90 degrees uh, approximately. So I'll kind of explain that to start. Um, and then also I will explain a few things that you should look for in the follow through when your right hand or, or right arm gets parallel with the ground as well. So as I'm demonstrating it here, I'm going to first kind of show you what we've already learned. So up to uh, waist high in the back swing, we know we got to keep our arms straight and not have too much uh, movement in the wrists. Okay, so but to continue the swing on to the next step, we have to hinge the wrist or, or break the wrist just so that the club head can get above the hands. Um, and at, at uh, chest height, or when the left arm is about parallel with the ground, you can see that the club and the arm is approximately at 90 degrees. Um, also, um, we know that from step one, we gotta keep our arms straight, but to bring the club up higher, it's okay for you to uh, break the right arm just, uh, just ever so slightly, because it'll be very uncomfortable if you try to lock out your arms um, up to this point as well. So from step one to step two, keep the left arm straight, but the right arm can bend a little bit, and you gotta break the wrist just to bring the club uh, to about 90 degrees with the left arm. Okay, so just to explain it um, as I'm doing it here, so <clears throat> to step one, we know that arm stays straight, up to about waist high, okay? And then from here to step two, you just wanna make sure that you hinge the wrist to the, so that the club is about close to 90 degrees with the left arm. Okay, and if I take my left hand off, you can see that my right arm is a little bit bent um, because if I try to keep my arm straight, it'd be very, very difficult for me to, to raise my arm and feel very, very uncomfortable. So the other thing to keep in mind as well as you're moving from step one to step two is you wanna continue to rotate your body um, uh, up to that point. You don't wanna stop your body at all and just keep the arms moving because um, then it'll also make it harder for you to keep your left arm straight. For the follow through position in step two, there's really three things um, that you wanna ensure that you, you're doing mainly, okay? So the first is you wanna keep your weight on your left side. Head is still mostly behind or to the right of the golf ball, right? We don't want the weight and the head to kind of move too far left or ahead of the ball at this point. And the second point is that you wanna keep both the right arm and the left arm straight uh, through impact at this point. And I know in the, in the way back, we talked about the right arm being um, a little bit bent, but after impact, you wanna ensure that both arms are extended. Um, the, the third is that you wanna make sure that the right hand kind of rolls over top of the left hand just to ensure that the club face continues to close um, through impact. Before the follow through, um, if I just first demonstrate again, step one, right? It's right here. So we established that in the follow through for step one, your weight has to be on your left side, right? Your head does not move and my arms are straight, okay? So step one follow through should look like this. So now, step two uh, in the follow through kind of looks like this. So it's basically the same thing, just your arms have gone a little bit higher up to, the, to where the right arm is parallel with the ground, okay? And both arms stay straight, okay? Both of my arms like this. So now the only thing to consider here is that when I go into my step two position, my right hand kind of rolls over top of my left hand. You see that? So it doesn't stay kind of on the bottom like this, which is a very common mistake for beginners, okay? 
So from step two, you can see my hands kind of rolling over top of my left hand, okay? And all that really does is when I roll my left, right hand over my left hand, you see how that closes the club? If I keep my right hand under, that leaves the club face pointing to the right. So you'll tend to hit shots off to the right if you don't roll the right hand over the left, okay? So, arms are straight, right arm is at parallel. My weight is still on my left side with my head still uh, relatively in the same spot. Now that you have an understanding of what step two should look like from the front view, I'll start by kind of explaining uh, just the backswing um, of, ste of step two from the side view. When I explain things from the side view, there's really only two main things that I wanna make sure that all beginners do uh, for the most part. And the first is that you wanna to continue to ensure that your club face is square, okay? And to do that, you've gotta pay attention to what your wrists are doing, okay, as you hinge the club. The second thing is that we have to ensure that your hands are still around you and not going straight back. Because um, in the golf swing, you have to continue to turn and your hands will have to continue to move around you more. So uh, that would be the second thing that we have to ensure that you're doing um, as you do step two. Okay, so from the side view, um, I just want to really go over how to keep the club face square as you hinge the club um, up to that step two position, okay? So um, when I'm bringing the club up to step two, right, most, most beginners, they tend to keep their their wrist or their left wrist cupped so that it would look kind of something like this okay so see how it's cupped here okay and what that does to the club face is if you can see where it's pointing it points the club face more up okay and that means that the club face at impact will most likely be pointing off to the right okay so the way to hinge the club properly or bring the club up properly with the wrist is you want to make sure that when you've hinged it, your left wrist is very flat, okay, and your right wrist, the palm of your right hand faces more so away from you, okay? So in that position that most beginners are in, if I cup the left wrist, right, you can see there's a cup in my left hand, and my right, the palm of my right hand is facing more towards me, okay? So we have to ensure that by the time your uh, left arm is up, up, up parallel with the ground, left wrist is flat, and right wrist, or the palm of the right hand, faces more away from you, okay? So that'll keep the club face a bit more square or pointing towards the, to the camera, you guys, whereas when the club face is more open, the club will kind of be pointing more up, okay? So we know that in the step one, the face is a little bit down, okay? So when we hinge it, it should look more like this. The uh, second point from the side view is just to ensure that your hands are still behind your body enough, okay? So most beginners, what they tend to do is when they take the club back, their hands stay very much in front of their bodies over here, okay, when they hinge the club, okay? And that's because most people have the idea that you've got to swing the club straight back and straight through, okay? But since the golf swing, you're turning, your hands have to continue to move around you, okay? So by the time you're at step two, you see how my hands are a bit more behind my body at this point, okay? So if you look at my left arm, my left arm is not straight, okay? It's actually angled a little bit more across my chest, okay? So I, we know that from step one, we talked about the hands going around you at the start, so now when you hinge the club up, right, my hands will still be more so kind of over, over top of my right pocket, okay, when, when I'm in this position here, okay? So that's the, a really, really important point um, that, will, that will set you up to learn how to swing the club down into the ball correctly later on. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that gave you some insight as to how to make the swing a little bit bigger than the last time um, and to help you kind of learn what it's like to have a half of a swing. So in the next video, uh, this will be the last episode in the beginner series, just because 
at this point you'll have a good understanding or a general idea um, of how to make a full swing.